brought to you by thevirtualinstructor.com, featuring artists Matt Fussell and Ashley Hurst. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with thevirtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy there live as it stayed on my face for a few minutes there. <laughs> Everybody's doing great. Getting Sketchy is where one of us, either myself or my partner Ashley, tries to draw or paint something within a 45 minute time frame. And uh, that's the way it's been this season, anyway. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody from around the world, wherever you are in the chat box. Of course, this is live on YouTube, so anything can happen. If you do have a question that's directed at myself or Ashley tonight, if you put it in all capital letters, that'll help Ashley see it since he's manning the chat box tonight. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for, I was just checking the chat. I see a lot of familiar faces and names in there. So um, like Matt said, if you have questions, just let me know with all caps and I'll be sure uh, to get it out here. So what are we doing tonight? Tonight we're going to be drawing an autumn or fall leaf, and uh, we're going to be using a combination of pan pastels and oil-based colored pencils. So I'm going to be using the polychromous pencils by Faber-Castell. Might throw a little bit of stick pastel in there too, which is just the traditional soft pastels. If you don't have pan pastels, uh, which I've already had a couple of people reach out to me and say that they don't have pan pastels, you can use regular soft pastels. They're not gonna behave exactly the same way, but you'll still be able to get some color on the surface in a similar way. The pan pastels are just gonna save you a little bit of time. They're gonna be a little bit more like a painting application um, and less so like a pastel application, even though it's pretty much the same material. Um, and I'm gonna be working on um, pastel matte paper, which we used a couple weeks ago when I did the red pepper. It was a pepper, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, when we did the red pepper a couple of weeks ago. So it's the same type of paper. Um, and it's a great paper for combining uh, pastels, you know, pan pastels, of course, and colored pencils. It works great with colored pencils as well. There is a tooth to the paper, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, part of what we've been doing this season um, as part of Getting Sketchy is we have been going through Ashley and I's top five artists of all time. And tonight it's my turn to reveal my number two artist. And my number two artist is... Pablo Picasso. You'd have to be living under a rock uh, to not know who Pablo Picasso is. Oh, I love that jacket. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, doesn't mm. it? Um, and, of course, Pablo Picasso was a Spanish artist, and um, he is uh, well-known, of course, for being one of the co-founders of Cubism um, and basically changing the course of modern art, um, of course. A lot of people consider Pablo Picasso to be a prodigy, but what a lot of people don't understand is uh, Picasso's dad was actually an art teacher and started teaching him at a very young age. Uh, so he developed skills very, very quickly because of his teacher. It's kind of the, his dad who was his teacher. It's kind of similar to what we see with like Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods' dad uh, worked with him a lot when he was young. And um, of course, Mozart. Mozart's dad was also a music teacher. And of course, he became Mozart. So um, it, I, I preach a lot on the site and on this channel that Drawing and painting are skills that anyone can learn, and that's really true. Uh, really, anybody can learn how to draw and paint. It's not totally dependent on talent. Um, and I think Picasso, uh, Mozart, and of course Tiger Woods are good examples of starting early and learning is a good way to become good at those particular skills. So anyway, my number two on the list is Picasso. And next week, Ashley will be revealing his number one on the list. Do you want to uh, hmm. give us any hints on oh, your I'm, number one? I'm trying to think of a good hint. The last time I gave a hint, uh, you guys all guessed it immediately in the chat, so I'm hesitant to do so. And um, let me see. Okay, I'll give you one. Since um, since Matt mentioned <laughs> that his number two is a Spanish artist, um, my next pick is also a Spanish artist. We had quite a few Spanish artists on the list. I had Dolly already, so we're kind of showcasing them in our top 10 lists. So that's all I'm going to really tell like you. You really like the Spaniards. I well, do. I guess we like the Spaniards. because do. I, I, one's mine. Mm -hmm. like Spaniard. I just wanted to say Spaniard. <laughs> um, so anyway, you'll have to uh, tune in next week for Ashley's number one. But, you know, if you know your Spanish artist and you can eliminate Picasso and uh, you can eliminate Dolly, then you know there's probably... 
only really a couple left that could be on there. Remember, this is that's true. This is Ashley's number it's one. It's true. If we eliminate those two, I bet you can figure it out. Yeah. So, um, so tune in next week or put who you think it is in the comments um, uh, here on YouTube. Um, and I should go ahead and tell you again, just remind you that Getting Sketchy is brought to you by the virtual instructor.com. We have a wonderful membership program over there where we offer a variety of drawing and painting courses, mm. um, which include videos, step by step ebooks. And then we somebody guessed it in the chat. I, I hate to interrupt, it. but somebody guessed it in the chat roll. So <laughs> you, everybody easy, close your eyes. Don't look uh, at the chat roll until it's off your, until it scrolls to the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, we also do live lessons there, and the live lessons that are offered for members are a little bit longer. They're a little bit more in-depth, and tonight we're starting a brand new series. Last week, we wrapped up a series where I was doing a graphite drawing of my daughter, and I'll put together a time lapse for you guys on, here on YouTube so you can see the whole process. But if you want to you know, take it deep and, and go into the step-by-step -step process, the, really the live lesson series are, are where it's at because it's real-time. It's uncut. It's kind of like what we're doing here on Getting Sketchy, but here in Getting Sketchy, we're being really sketchy. Um, on, on the live lessons, we're going really in-depth. And, and tonight, we're going to start a new series on oil painting, so I'm excited about uh, starting that new series. Um, but that will start at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after we're done here on YouTube. So if you want to check out our membership program, there is a link in the description below. Everybody starts out with a week-long free trial. And uh, there's also a link below to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free. So if you wanna just stick your toes in the water and dabble a little bit, <laughs> you can do that too. And check out uh, three of our course videos and eBooks for free. It's not the whole course, it's just uh, one of the lessons from the course, uh, from three of our courses and the eBooks that go along with it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get into this process. So yeah, let's see what we're doing over. tonight. All right, so out here in front of me, I have this wonderful little light gray sheet of uh, pastel matte paper. Now, this paper does have a little bit of a tooth to it, kind of like kind of like a very, very fine grit sandpaper. Um, and it does come in a variety of different uh, colors and values. And this is a, a, a light gray, obviously. Um, and uh, that's I just picked the light gray because uh, because I think that if we I don't have enough time to cover the background the light gray could work as a background on its own, um, and there's a little uh, photo reference up there in the corner that's the photo reference I'm going to be working from. I actually picked this leaf up this morning on a run, believe it or not, and took the picture myself. So I don't have a link to Pixabay or anything like that. When I do get around to posting this lesson on the blog over at the website, I will be sure to put this photo reference in, in there. So if you want a larger version of it, you can, uh, you can use it to follow along. Just real quickly to go through the materials, because for some of you, pan pastels might be a little bit of a mysterious uh, medium. It's not one that I use a whole lot, but um, it is an interesting medium, as I mentioned before. And it does save some time, especially when you're dealing with a colored image. Um, and working with uh, colored pencils uh, specifically. But uh, this is my little pan pal pastel set. It's it's not extensive. I only have a few basic colors. Um, I, I know a lot of people have a ton of different colors out there, but this is what I have. And I do mix these kind of like I'm mixing watercolor paint that might be in, in pans like this. Um, but what you do is you just take the applicator, and here's one of the applicators. Now the top side is the dirty side, okay? So the bottom side I've got nice and clean. Um, and you just dip the applicator in here and pick up some of the material and then spread it on the surface, of course. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. A lot of this is gonna happen off camera, but uh, I think you kind of get the idea of what pan pastels are all about. Now I'm gonna be using uh, polychromos pencils here by Faber-Castell. These are oil-based colored pencils. They are pricey. They're gonna behave slightly different than wax-based colored pencils. An example of a popular wax-based colored pencils, of course, are the Premier Pencils by Prismacolor. These are oil-based by Faber-Castell, so they behave a little bit differently. Uh, and the main way they behave differently is that with wax-based colored pencils, you really build up a waxy layer, and you can almost move that waxy layer around on the surface. 
These oil-based pencils do not behave the same way. Although you can layer colors and you can do a little bit of burnishing, it's just not the same as wax-based colored pencils. But what they are great for is working on a textured surface like this. It just doesn't look like it's textured, but it does have a, a tooth associated with it. So um, these pencils are the pencils that I usually use when I'm working on this particular paper or any heavy toothed paper. All right. How many leaves did you go through before you chose that one? That's a fantastic and, leaf. Oh, thanks. Just four or five. Okay. I, I, I picked up like a handful in a five-foot radius. Oh, well, it's got a lot of nice color and, to it. And Yeah. We'll see what happens here. Okay, <laughs> so I am I'm a little concerned that I'm going to be able to finish this in 45 minutes because we're using colored pencils, and colored pencils are usually a detail-oriented detail medium. That's why I've brought along my friends Pan Pastels <laughs> to uh, see if this helps with the process a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So let me get my paper towel over here, and I will go ahead and start the timer to uh, make sure that I'm legit. And then I'm going to just start here by just loosely drawing out the contours of the leaf here with a uh, dark brown colored pencil. I think this is a walnut, walnut brown um, here. It's not really that important that I'm too specific with the colored pencils here, the colors. And it's also not that entirely important that I'm totally accurate with my contour lines here either. So I'm not going to get too obsessed with making sure everything is absolutely perfect and accurate. I'm going to try to look at the negative space. And, of course, I'm going to try to be as accurate as possible. I guess what's but, important really is to capture the character of the contour and not exactly or not um, as much the proportion since leaves come with a little bit of variety in size. But uh, that sort of that jagged edge is pretty characteristic of this. Of This This is a maple leaf. Am I right? Is yeah, that that's leaf? right. Yeah, I do want it to look like a maple leaf. Mm -hmm, that's right. Um, and I think I'm making it too large for... <laughs> For 45 minutes? For the amount of time I have, <laughs> I, you know, I kind of made a mental note, make sure you make it small enough to complete. And here I am drawing it larger, so we'll see what happens. I, I am I am really afraid I'm not going to make it within the 45 minutes with this medium. Um, well, it, hopefully the pastel will give you a good jump on it. it hopefully, yeah. Even with graphite, uh, I would be concerned if it's just graphite mm -hmm. alone. Because I tend to kind of get wrapped up in details, and um, that really kind of slows me down a little bit. I'm sure a lot of you are that way as well. We should do a second show called um, Getting Details. It's a 4.5-hour drawing <laughs> show instead of 45 minutes. 4.5 hours. That's pretty exact. I just moved the decimal place a couple of spaces. Are you going to capture the drop shadow under the leaf that helps it feel like it's so light up lifting off the page? I am. That's the plan. Yeah. Okay, good. I was but, so. uh, that's I'm saving that for the end. Okay. So I'm going to address the entire body of the leaf first, go over the top of it with colored pencils, and um, then come back to that. Okay. So it, my initial sketch is down. Um, I, could, I could play around with this a little bit and change things a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think this is... This is just fun. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start work with the uh, pan pastels here. And we'll just start with a little bit of red. And I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna in that as well. And I'm just going to start getting some of the color on the surface with the applicator. Let's bring in a little bit more burnt sienna. And I'll be able to go right over the top of this. And I'm not going to be too concerned with the pastel material spreading out. It really goes down solid on that slight tooth on the paper, doesn't it? It really, it really does. Grabs it, I can uh, tell. And I can I can layer it too. So I'm just gonna kind of getting some of these reds in here. Okay, we got a question about um, pencils between two choices. Which is better for pencils, I guess, to use today? Um, I have 100 or 120. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce this. I don't use these. Karen Dash. Publix? Karen Dash. Karen Dash. Karen Dash. I have mispronounced Publix? the heck out of those. And then also um, 72 Derwents. On hot press or cold press paper? Do you have a, uh, have a suggestion between those what, two brands? What uh, kind of uh, Derwent colored pencils do you have? Let's see. Is there a, a it, brand name? Uh, maybe, with maybe Mrs. Rob's Dan will tell us. What kind of Derwent pencils are those specifically? And I would probably suggest the hot press paper, even though it doesn't have a tooth to it, um, just just because as opposed to, to what? It's opposed to cold paper? pressed paper with, oh, the, yeah. with the pencils. 
Yeah, definitely. If you're working on cold press watercolor paper, it is going to be a lot. You're going to have to put in a lot of effort mm -hmm. to really build up those layers. Okay, I just want to point out that I'm I'm being very loose with the edges here, uh, and we'll be able to clean that up in the end. So I'm not going to get too worked up over um, some of this pastel material expanding out beyond the boundaries of the, the mm -hmm. leaf here. So we've got a question about that live lesson tonight, and I hope everybody makes it over to the virtual instructor for the live lesson tonight and signs up so you can see what it's going to be all about. But uh, there's a question about the live lesson from Pat. What size canvas will you be using? Uh, eight by 10. Okay. Very eight, small. Eight by 10. That'll fit right under the camera. That'll be perfect. Yep. <laughs> does have to fit under the camera tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of green, and I'm going to make a little bit of green by using, uh, I'm going to call this a cadmium yellow. It's kind of a primary yellow and a blue. So I just mix that right there, right in the pan pastel. And just brought that over. And this is just kind of like a little bit of an underpainting here. So I'm going to develop the details with the colored pencils, of course. What I like about your set, and I know you mentioned that it was limited, it wasn't a huge set of colors. I actually like that you pretty much just have a couple of neutrals and then the primaries and secondaries because when I have too many colors that I'm working with on my palette, sometimes I'll forget which ones I combine to make a mixture. And when I only have colors or hues right off of the color wheel, my choices are pretty simple. Yeah, that's a good point. It does help with uh, color mixing, the less, less colors that you use. And since you don't have a ton of specialty colors, you know, it helps, uh, it helps others follow along, I guess, too. They're more likely to have those same colors. Well, yeah, and these pan pastels are expensive. Um, that's why I don't really have more colors than I have because mm -hmm. I don't really use them that much. You know, I just, I've, I've used them for a few landscape paintings, for a few actual colored pencil drawings mm -hmm. that just needed a little bit of fill in the color here and there quickly. So when you order them, do you order them by the color or a whole, or a set or do um, you have the option to well, do either? I ordered these, oh my gosh, it's been... It's been at least six years ago okay. that I got these. So there might be a different way. They might come in sets now. And this might have been like a, uh, just a starter set or, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a mixing set or something like that. But Well, it's getting covered pretty fast. It is. It's saving. It really is saving some time. Um, but this is not, an, you know, it's not very precise. Well, like you said, it's an underpainting kind of when you think about it like that. I, I like to make underpaintings. Um, and then the second go around is your chance for, for details and to make some subtle adjustments. And I'm actually going to have to switch applicators because this one I got a little too aggressive with. And went right through it. We had a blowout. <laughs> And okay, the pencils, um, just to get back to those pencils, are color soft pencils. Okay, yeah, the color soft pencils are great. Uh, I have a set of those somewhere around here, and I also have the Kieran Dash pencils. I have a big set of the Kieran Dash pencils. I don't use the Kieran Dash pencils that much. I've used them for uh, maybe one or two demonstrations, and uh, it's just because the Kieran Dash pencils are wax based, and I, I kind of like. I, I'm. I'm pretty sure the color softs are wax based too, but mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to use a wax based pencil, I'm typically going to go with my favorite brand, which is uh, of course the Premier pencils, which again, not everyone loves, um, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really don't understand why they get such a bad rap. It seems like just people kind of got on board with that and then started bashing it. Well, and, it's nice. It's nice to bash the, I guess the brand, it seems like they're on top at the time, maybe. But uh, uh, maybe. there's a lot, of, a lot of great pencils, a lot of great choices out there. You just got to get 
a feel for what you know what works for you that tactile uh, experience so but, but i will say the kieran dash pencils are probably the brightest pencils that i've ever used hmm. so if you are using them on a dark surface like a black paper or a dark gray surface those pencils are definitely going to stand out more so than some of the other brands so if you're looking for really bright colors then i would suggest going with the karen oh okay uh, karen dash. Well, that's good information i do love to draw on dark blue or black paper all right let's see uh, what the the applicator we got a question here uh, from in the chat the applicator that you're using what is it called does it have a name? Did it come um, with your set? They're made with. They're made by the same company that makes okay. uh, the pan pastel. So I, I guess think you they could just uh, do a search for pan pastel applicator. Maybe that's what it's called. Or we'll yeah. If we'll you just go to out. if you just search for pan pastels or the buy pan pastels or something like that, you'll probably come across their website, We've which got, has um, all the colors and all the applicators. And this is an old applicator, so it's probably probably not in its most optimal. I bet you condition. could. I bet you could make tools to apply those with too. Maybe. Well, yes. Yeah, Q-tips, maybe. One. I don't know if Q-tips would be strong enough, but one mm -hmm. person suggested just using regular makeup applicators. Hmm. I have used my wife's makeup brushes to blend out the brush strokes in oil paintings before, kind of like a a goat hair or goat bristle brush, but I just didn't have one, so I uh, took a stroll into the bathroom and found just the softest mop brush. And um, it's in my oil painting kit now. Yeah, I've used a mop brush before. Well, maybe it was a makeup brush, but I called it a mop brush. This one was so soft, you can just dust over the surface of the wet paint, and the paint stays right where it right where it belongs, and the bristles just flatten out. Or the uh, the uh, brush strokes. Um, Brent Does Art tells us that pan pastels are both sold individually and in various sized sets. So that's super. Thanks for letting us know. I figured that was the case. Mm -hmm. we got a beginner in colored pencils, Mona A. Thanks for being with us tonight. What paper do you recommend for, for color pencils? There's lots of different papers that work really well for colored pencils. Um, if you're just starting out and you're brand new, you're probably gonna wanna start with something like Bristol Vellum, uh, which is Bristol paper with a vellum surface, which has a little bit of a tooth associated with it. But if you're gonna be doing uh, you know, only a few layers, which most people starting out with colored pencils are only gonna be applying a few layers, uh, then that paper is really nice for working with. Um, if you want to be a little bit more, uh, if you wanna layer a little bit more, then, um, Stonehenge paper is really, really nice. Stonehenge paper is more expensive, uh, but it comes in a variety of different tones. And uh, these days, that's my favorite paper for working with colored pencils. Stonehenge, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay, they are called soft applicators. S-O-F-F-T. Soft. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Okay, I've got my initial applications in place and I have 32 minutes left. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna flip this paper towel over here and now I'm gonna go in with uh, some colored pencil applications. I'm gonna start here actually with the walnut brown, the same color I started with, and we're gonna start addressing some of these veins here. And uh, again, like I said at the beginning, what's really nice about this combination here is the colored pencils do go right over the top of these pan pastel applications. Now these little veins have kind of a dark side on both sides of them. And again, I need to just keep reminding myself not to get too wrapped up with the details here because I am on a time limit. But it is really hard to force myself to do that here since I like to be so precise with these colored pencils anyway. Does the tip wear down a little faster with a with a, a little, little softer the oil based pa, uh, pencils? They're not necessarily softer, but on this paper they do wear down very very quickly, mm -hmm. um, and that would be true of any paper any pencil that you use. Big Blue Minamiku asked, "Did anyone come up with an answer to the Prismacolor microwave question? You know, we made it a whole week without talking about the Prismacolor microwave question." And so um, I thought uh, maybe it won't come up again, but uh, I assumed it probably would. And then I thought 
When it does, I'm just going to say that I did it and that it worked. But I cannot tell a lie. I have not (laughs) yet tested out the microwave-saving colored pencil theory yet, uh, but still plan to do so. I, I, look, I took a long, hard look at my microwave this week while no one was home, and I, and I thought about it. And I was afraid uh, when, when my wife got back, there would be a strange smell in the house I couldn't explain. So I thought better of it. Yeah, we, we still don't know. <laughs> but we, um, just, to, just to review, you, you may be able to repair the colored pencils that are, have broken you know, filament, broken lead inside with the microwave with the oven, possibly hot water or the sun. That's where we're at right now. I think those are our four options for saving our colored pencils. That and We will test this theory. And I don't think this will work on oil-based pencils. Just since we're working with oil-based pencils right now. Just to clarify, just, we're not yeah, talking about these pencils. Yeah, this is wax-based pencils and probably more specifically just Prisma colored pencils because I'm, I'm not really sure the other pencils are afflicted by this. Rocky Max says he doesn't have a microwave, so he can't help us out. But Rocky, I want to commend you for not having a microwave and um, and cooking your food the right way, the way humans were intended to eat with with an oven or fire, actual heat. So um, my microwave, actually my son ruined one of our microwaves when he was little. He put something in there he wasn't supposed to. Was it a colored pencil? No, it was a package. He was so small, he could barely reach it. And he knew that Mommy and Daddy put things in that box and pushed a button, and they came out, and you could eat them, I guess. And some, you know, that's how young he was. And he grabbed a package that had plastic all around it. It was something you're supposed to take you know, out of the package. And he put it in the microwave and pushed some buttons. I have no idea how long the microwave was on. But I had to grab it and hold my breath and throw it out of the house, and then we all had to run out of the house because there were harmful fumes inside. I could barely breathe. So we didn't replace that microwave for a while. And it was difficult for a couple of weeks. And then we got used to not having one. And we would warm up our food with the oven. And it wasn't soggy. And it was so great. But, um, you know, life moves kind of fast. And eventually we, we bought another microwave because we didn't have a time. Oh, the best part was when we cooked dinner, we all ate at the same time. Because if you didn't, your dinner wasn't hot anymore. And so it actually brought the family together during dinner time, not having a microwave. So... Maybe I will ruin our microwave again. Thanks, Rocky. Lots right. of, Rocky says he eats lots of salad. <laughs> <laughs> so initially, after after putting down these initial applications of the walnut brown, kind of just um, defining some of these veins, I'm now going to go in with some of these other colors here. And right over the top, just add a little bit of variety to some of these greens and some of these reds. And some of these veins are also pretty deep green. Mm-hmm. All right, we're all ready to some of the some of the specific characteristics of this leaf, and you still got twenty seven minutes. So, well, I I feel like I, I'm. Still in that state of panic. Mm-hmm. I think you can settle down a little bit. I think you got time to settle into this drawing now. It's not, the material is there. You but just have to work it. It doesn't matter what you say. I, <laughs> <laughs> I am always in a state of panic. That's true. Uh, so even though I am, I have permission to slow down, I'm, I'm just going to keep panicking. I don't know if you guys know this out there, but Matt's a worrier, and he's got a theory that, um, that worrying is uh, helps you, helps you get things done, and there's actually a little truth to that. It really does, but it also is it will uh, destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a trade off. It a is trade-off. a trade off, and my my middle daughter is just like I am. She is just like me, and uh, bless her heart, she's constantly working, constantly uh, worried that she's not doing things right or correctly, and. Mm-hmm. Um, just like me. And you don't like seeing that in somebody else? Uh, no, I know that it's going to help her possibly be successful in life because, uh, you know, it, it kind of encourages you to be a hard worker. But uh, I also know the trade-off there that even though you might be a hard worker, you still have to kind of live with a little bit of a state of torture. Mm-hmm. A little bit of panic yeah. under the surface. All right, let's... Pull some yellow green in here. I know I just saw some of that here. Mm-hmm. Now let's go right on the top of 
the vein there. So many colors. I mean, with this, with that base application in place, you can really, really get some really nice stuff going on in here. Again, you don't have to work as fast as I'm trying to work. You can slow down, take your time. I guess I could too, but then it wouldn't be as entertaining, right? It's true. All right, I see that uh, corner really warming up now. There is a limit, though. There is a limit to how much you can layer here. Um, and there is a point where just no more of the material will go on there, so... You don't have any, you don't really have any white highlights or anything in this leaf, but I do like working on off-white or gray paper, just slightly gray like that, so that I do have that option to go the other way on the value scale at least once, you know, if I need to lighten or brighten something up. What kind of paper is that again? What was the brand? This is pastel matte paper. It's by a company called Clear Fontaine. Okay. And this is not something you're going to find in your art store, unless you go to a a real art store, you know, uh, not one of the big chains, which seems like that's all that really exists anymore. Just about. Um, so this is something that you can order off of Amazon, I believe, but you do have to be prepared to wait for it. It's not a prime item or anything like that. Um, so it is definitely specialty paper, mm -hmm. but it's worth the wait. You can see down here, even when I'm trying to layer some of this yellow, it's just, it will not go over the top, cover it completely. But we can take a little bit more of the pan pastel if we want to make that a little stronger. So what are you doing? Removing some pastel there? No, I'm adding oh, some adding. Okay, because I gotcha. the, the yellows I wanted to add there just weren't strong enough. Mm, I can see the pastel went down though. So um, most of the guesses for my top artists were either Goya or Velasquez. You're right. I won't tell you which one. Could be either. Could be either. Both are, des are very deserving. All right. I'm going to bring in a little bit of red here. just need to figure out what red I want to bring in. I feel like it needs to be a warmer... A little more red, maybe a, more of an orangey red. Let's try this one here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I can see that going down. Maybe because it's a darker color. Not, yeah. The, the yellow, um, you know, sometimes yellows just struggle because they're so, they're so light. They're almost white with a color. Yeah, that's true. And I clearly like to work with a bunch of pencils in my hand. <laughs> and I'm also bouncing around all over the place. I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that even if I run out of time, it still kind of looks finished. Well, you know, we were talking before Matt started, and when you're working when you're working on a subject, if you, you know, sometimes I work from, from, from left to right and, and sometimes Matt does too, you know, to keep your hand out of it. But if you develop your artwork evenly, you can stop at any time and it, it feels like it could be done um, just because no one area feels, is making another area feel less finished. Now we do have a question from Mary. Um, Hi guys, I can't believe I finally caught you, caught a live with you, um, caught a live with you, Matt, being in Australia. Oh Yeah. It's hard with the time difference. I'll bet it is, Mary. Um, yeah. Matt, could you please explain the difference between oil pastels and oil sticks? Hmm, okay. Uh, I'll do my best. I, I'm pretty sure oil sticks are basically like more like oil paint. Um, so you probably find big, big old, the oil sticks are more than likely going to come uh, as these large, large sticks where oil pastels are... 
Um, a little bit different. I believe oil pastels might use a vegetable. Yeah, they oil. use a non-drying oil. That's right. Uh, where oil sticks, I do think dry. I think that they're they're like oil paint in a stick form. Um, I'm th- I might be wrong about them drying completely, but uh, there is a difference. And I know that the oil sticks are are definitely a little bit more like oil paint, and oil pastels are a little bit more like a crayon. Do you have anything right. to add to that? Um, I don't. I haven't actually used oil sticks before. It's been a really long time since I've used oil sticks, and I can't really... I haven't used them recently, obviously, Mm -hmm. but... Um, Vibes says hi a few times. Brent Does Art says, Why did you choose colored pencils over pastel pencils? That's a good question, since you started with pastel. Um, Yeah, I think the reason is just because I have a little bit more variety with the the, uh, colored pencils and a little bit more control, Um, and I like having that control. Um, but I, d- you definitely could use, uh, pastel pencils here, but the thing about pastel pencils is they need to be sharpened a lot for a drawing like this. And the, the colored pencils I'm able to kind of work for a longer period of time, uh, okay. without having to resharpen my pencil just because of the nature of this particular drawing. But that's, I could have used, uh, could have used pastel pencils. Just didn't. Okay. I like pastel pencils. All right. At this point, I'm just kind of trying to define some of the dark areas and kind of get some of the edges a little bit cleaner here and there. So I'm going in and uh, just darkening up areas here and there with the, the walnut brown. Thanks, Pat. Um, Pat tells us that you are right that the oil pastels are made of a non-mineral or non-drying mineral oil, so they don't completely dry, but that oil sticks are basically oil paint in stick form. So yeah, it's, it's it, good the to oil confirm. sticks are, are are a strange medium, uh, really, <laughs> but yeah. uh, they're they're great for like doing large, abstract kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Fast, uh, yeah, and fast, they feel great right. to use. They really do. Kind of like lipstick or something. Not that I'm saying that lipstick <laughs> is good to use or fun to use. In a pinch, I guess you could make a drawing with lipstick. <laughs> maybe next week. Well, next week's your turn. Oh, so. that's right. Well, so maybe next week. We're drawing a pair of lips next week. I'm just kidding. Judith has a has a question. Can you give us any tips on how to make shadows look more natural and realistic? Yes. Put color in there. Mm, there you go. Do, shadows are not typically just neutral. And I say that and I have a gray yeah, pastel. Yeah, I, I, I was going to point that out, but that's true. They're put. not. Sometimes they're hotter. <laughs> they can be warmer, cool. And then, of course, edge quality is super important for shadows. Um, the edge of a shadow is a little sharper. Closer to, now I'm, I'm talking about cast shadows now, uh, a little sharper, close to the object that casts them, and the shadows become lighter and softer around the edge the farther you get from the object that casts them. Now, you you said that you're talking about cast shadows there. Will you clarify for those who don't know the other types of shadows? Um, well, I hope so. I, I, I think of shadows as being either you know, on, on, on the subject or cast off or away from the subject. Right. Is that what you mean, Matt? Yeah, so you can have on an object, for example, you have a, a core shadow. Okay. And gotcha. then um, you have mid-tone, you have highlight, you have different areas of value on on a subject. And, you know, a cast shadow is the shadow that's created because light is blocking, is blocked uh, because of a, an object that's in front of it, mm-hmm. where a core shadow is a shadow that's actually on the subject. Judith says that she's using gray blue for the shadow on her drawing. I think that's a good choice, especially with some of the colors in the leaf. Nice. It just says, wow, that looks great. Oh, you're too kind, but thank you. How much time do I have? 16 minutes? 16 minutes. I've just got to save enough time to do... Uh Uh-oh, a kitty cat just tracked pan, pan pastels all over... Vicky Miller's paper. A kitty cat? Mm. 
Who out there is drawing with a kitty cat? Maybe you can use their paws <laughs> as your soft applicator. If they're if they'll <laughs> if you if they'll stay still in your arms, maybe you can use their paws to paint with. There you go. And then you can list uh, a kitty cat as your medium. Yeah, <laughs> could be dangerous. We don't want to make anybody angry out there. No cats were harmed in the making of this video. Yeah, I, have, I don't have a really good relationship with cats. I, we can't talk about this because I love cats and I'll get mad at Matt. Well, I, it's, not, it's not my fault. <laughs> uh, I, I'm allergic to cats. All so right. I, I really can't have a good relationship with cats. I have two dogs and a, a lizard. And we had guinea pigs up till recently. Yeah, it's not that you're anti-pet. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a. I'm an animal lover. Mm -hmm. True. Um, I just. Well, you had a bad. You had a bad kitty one time. I did have a bad kitty. Yeah. Um, but now I am. I am. I. Ironically, allergic to cats. And mm -hmm. I guess the powers that be said, "All right, that's enough." For you, no more cats. It's a you. way to keep the cats away from you, as much as um, you away. <laughs> I guess you away from them. It definitely keeps the cats away from me. Anyway, you can see. I, let's get back to the drawing here for just a second because I'm I'm bouncing all around, and I want uh, you guys to know that it's okay to do that. It's okay to bounce around, and I also want you to notice that my colors aren't exactly the same as the reference, and that's okay too. Um, so hopefully you can see that as I'm bouncing around slowly, as I'm I'm building up more contrast in and more color and some of the details. Hopefully you can see that things are starting to take shape a little bit more. And even in these areas where I've put a little bit of the colored pencil in place, the tooth of the paper is showing up a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of go back over with a, uh, a color that's similar and kind of burnish these applications in a little bit. So it, it eradicates some of the tooth there. Mm -hmm. Mary says that she's been waiting to tell you how much she is enjoying her subscription. The website is an absolute gold mine of lessons. Oh, thank you. That's great. Says you're an incredible teacher and artist, Matt. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, a lot of, you know, it, it's, I shouldn't say it's been because it still is a, a lot of work and really just a, uh, an act of, of passion, mm -hmm. really, um, for the last I guess I started it in 2010, 2009, that kind of area. So for the last decade or so. Jeannie says that uh, she loves her membership as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And I thank you guys for being a part of it, too. It's what really... Ishta says that, that, um, that, that uh, they are in your Udemy course. Okay. Super. Well, very good. Yeah, we have some... Some of, of our those courses there, are yeah. over at Unimi. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe about half of them are offered over at Udemy. Now just adding some red there. And, it, and one of the things that is really making this, you know, Ashley pointed out that this was an attractive leaf, and it's probably one of the reasons that attracted me to this particular leaf. It sounds like I'm talking about meeting my wife years ago, but um, was was the red and green combination. Um, and of course, red and green are complementary, So that provides high contrast. And in some areas on this leaf, the reds and the greens are almost right next to each other. And of course, those yellows and oranges help too. All right, let's go back down here and try to make this a little bit darker. Hmm. Cher Lynn mentions about the oil sticks. Thanks for the info uh, that she has an oil painting that she needs to f do some fixing on and that this may actually do the trick. That's a good, that's a good idea. Using the oil steps, sticks for maybe some touch up. If I remember correctly, the last time I used the oil sticks, they were, they were kind of bulky to work with. So I think that... Um, they're probably better suited for covering large areas. Could you shape you them? Could, could you carve or shape the tip maybe? I, you know, I imagine you probably could. Mm -hmm. You just don't see a whole lot of artists use them. 
That may be a good way to distinguish yourself out there. That's a good point. All right, got 11 minutes, so I need to move on to mm -hmm. the stem here and then defining the outer edge. All right, so let's move on to the stem. <laughs> I'm gonna start with a lighter yellow green. Yeah, there here. is a little bit of light in there at the, at the end, isn't there? Just a little bit. It does yeah, change as it goes down. It's, it's not, the, it's not just the same. Rocky asks, what type of leaf is this? It's a maple leaf. I'm not sure if it's a sugar maple or a silver maple. Can't really tell. I don't know. I have just the, I have the tendency to just blow on the paper, even though there's no real reason to blow. I've been trying to see the dust come off when you do that, but I'm not sure. Did that you I'm, not just see it all fly I away? I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> I've got my glasses on. <laughs> all right. So there are other colors I could grab in here, of course, to do some of these areas, but I'm kind of just sticking with the colors that I got in my hand here because of, of the time. Um, and that'll kind of help to unify things a little bit. Pat's got a comment about the oil sticks um, that have, we've been talking about a little bit. It says that the oil sticks can be used with any type of oil painting mediums as long as the fat over lean rule is respected. Uh, that is useful. Thanks for that. And thanks for mentioning the fat over lean rule. We want, to, we want our paintings to last a lifetime. And of course, many artists in history have not always adhered to that rule. Mm -hmm. And that has caused some problems for painting standing the test of time. But it has created jobs for, um, oh, I, it slips my mind. It's the career where you fix old cracks in paintings. That slips uh, my mind. Art restorer. Yeah, an art a restorer. That's the word. Yeah. All right, um, like we that. could go more on this leaf, of course, clearly, um, but because we are under a time constraint, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the background, but I'm going to do so after I kind of highlight some of these veins here with the white. Trying to make some of them stand out just a little bit more. This is not, it is white, but it's not translating as white in the drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because it's mixing with some of the colors that are underneath. Okay. Right, a little bit to the stem here. All right. Now, this is a very, very light blue, I believe. And we're going to go around the edges of, this is just a pastel stick. And you see how it's similar to the color of the paper. And I'm going to use this to basically define the edges of the leaf here. Okay, so you're sharpening your contour with that. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Thinking, thinking like a painter. Well, yeah, it's very much a similar process. Yep. You can see how I've cut the edges. Yeah, there. that looks great now. Uh, so you can't, you can't freak out when. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go outside of the lines and saying, "Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't <laughs> keep this clean," when you don't really need to. Okay, we've got a couple questions in here. Hi, I have Prismacolors, and when I try to do shadows, they end up splotchy and weird. I'm, you, I'm doing brown on pale skin. Any tips? Well, it's difficult to know exactly why it may appear splotchy without I'm looking at your artwork. Um, it could be, it could have to do with, the, it could be the tooth of the paper. It, um, you might also try to, to layer very slowly in different directions so that uh, you get an an e more even application across the tooth in different directions that might that might help with the splotchiness. And you might also try um, a white color pencil or a blender pencil to sort of smooth or even out your, your mixture. Yeah, it sounds like you need probably to put more layers and more of a solid application on the surface that you're working on. And then make sure that you're working on a surface that accepts multiple layers. If you're working on regular drawing paper with colored pencils, you're going to have uh, some issues layering uh, the uh, layering your applications. And with colored pencils, it's very important to layer your applications. Um, and that I can kind of in my mind see a splotchy appearance, and it makes me think that there was 
maybe just, you know, clearly I can't see. <laughs> um, it could be that there just wasn't enough material layered on the surface. And that's why you have a little bit of a splotchy appearance. And then, of course, the paper could be playing a role there too. But it's probably one of those two factors, maybe a combination of both. Mm. Um, Ree T says, love drawings with charcoal. What is the best way to set it so it doesn't smudge, please? Well, we talk about that occasionally because um, Matt and I don't necessarily treat our charcoals and pastels the same way. I do, I do set mine with a final fixative when I'm finished with them. I use really light spray application, and I use the Grumbacher brand final fixative, and I spray it very lightly in one direction and I'll wait a minute or two and then very lightly um, in the opposite direction. So maybe I make horizontal rows very lightly. If you spray too much, it's going gonna, it's gonna to noticeably darken your artwork. And then I'll make vertical rows and then that's it. That's enough. Um, and Matt doesn't set his. He just, uh, he just I guess, mounts them, frames them, and uh, keeps them safe that way. Yeah, I just keep them covered up in a, in a drawer. Keeps them in a drawer. Until I'm ready to frame them or mat them or... Well, mat them and then frame them. And uh, that's just kind of how I keep them. And the reason why I do that is because the, the fixative does change the value of uh, the colors. So it does make things a little bit darker. And uh, it's, it's kind of slight, but in some drawings it can really be noticeable. Um, so I just kind of just... I'm not really transporting my art around here and there, so it's not usually a big deal for me. But I want really fine droplets to fall, so I try to spray from pretty far away, like 18 inches or 24 inches. If you get too close, um, that's when it starts to, to kind of make wetness on the surface, and then you'll, it'll be noticeably dark and can even become shiny, and you don't want a charcoal drawing to look shiny. Um, so... I would use no fixative or light fixative and, uh, and then just try to protect it. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of the shadow underneath there, hopefully in the next three uh, minutes. And I've got oh, a, yeah. a gray here for this. This is kind of a warmer gray. I like that you toned the background. And now you're working into it. It gives you a little more uh, control, I guess, on how strong that shadow becomes. Yeah, I don't want it to be super dark because it's not super dark. And in fact, I'm probably going to have to go over this again with the light blue here. And I'm also applying it with a very light touch. Sherry asks, are you putting in the white background first so that your shadows are darker? Were you worried about the gray No, paper? I'm actually putting the, the background in first so my shadows are lighter. Okay, so it'll mix with the white a little yeah. bit. Okay. In fact, I'm going to do some blending in just a minute. We can tell. You know, when you look at that gray patch near the top right of the leaf and then look at the actual pastel in your hand, um, the, pa the gray patch looks like it's one or two steps lighter than the stick on a value scale. Yeah, I don't want the shadow to be overpowering. Mm -mm. The leaf is definitely darker than shadow. Even in the area where it is, the shadow is the strongest, which is up here. Veek Ryder says, if my passion is mild, should I just cut my losses? I've only been drawing for two years. No, <laughs> no, don't do that. Keep, keep at it. Keep at it. My passion is mild. My passion is mild. It may just be part of your personality type. That's okay. I'm not a very, I'm, I'm not a very passionate person. I have almost no emotions. <laughs> and when I do feel an emotion, I just stuff it down. It works for me. <laughs> just keep it inside. Yeah, I just bottle it up. You know, put it in your microwave. Yeah, <laughs> it'll melt back together. <laughs> just put it in your microwave. Okay, uh, I'm going to blend this a little bit with my finger here. Uh, I'm going to allow that to be a little bit softer. Sometimes things will happen, and I know I'm supposed to feel angry about them or upset, and I don't feel anything at all. So You might want to go see somebody. I might need to that. see somebody. I'll, I'll, something will happen. I'll, I know I should have an emotional reaction to this, and it's just not happening. You're an emotionless, emotionless being. And this shadow, you know, this cast shadow is just weird. 
in, in the in the drawing itself. The okay, shape Rocky it is, got me. I do love cats. That's my there's my emotion. I, you, 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 I guess I do. I guess I have a feeling there. He knew you were making <laughs> that up. Uh, Sherry Scott is a psychotherapist and suggests that I take the time to feel my emotions. <laughs> of course, we'd have a therapist on here. Thank you for that. Thank you for the free advice. All right, now I'm going to clean up the shadow again with the light blue. It's looking really good. You got 38 seconds. Well, remember, it's just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when the buzzer sounds, the Im imaginary buzzer, I always put my pencil down. Matt goes just a few seconds over. I can't stop. <laughs> we don't actually have a buzzer, do we? There's not a buzzer. Okay. There, there used to be. But I think I was the only one that could hear it, and it would okay. go off, and it would scare the crap out of me. <laughs> And you'd make a stray mark right across the middle of your composition. All right. Uh, last bit here. I'm just going to make this edge a little bit stronger. This is not outlining. Well, it is kind of outlining, but it, I, I don't want to encourage people to outline. It's I'm just, accents. Just, right. I'm just defining the edge of the bottom part of the leaf there a little bit more. Um, and that'll make things pop a little bit more. As long as it's not a connected solid outline, it just feels like accents and shadows. Right. It's not a solid line, but where we get values that are similar, like in the reference, um, these values are not similar. But in my drawing, the values are similar. And uh, because they're similar, we lose the edge of the leaf a little bit right here. The colors are different, but the, the values are different, or, or not different. So not that different anyway. D. Lurio says, loving this, Matt and Ashley. Me too. Thank you for the comment. Thank you. Thank you for that. Next week, I'll be in the hot seat. Not sure what I'm going to draw yet. Yeah, I was just going to ask you what. I haven't, I haven't picked out an image yet. So. Um, I don't get a lot of screen time. I thought about doing a self-portrait. We've got two more episodes after this. Right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. In this for season. For this season. For this season. So. I heard a collective gasp out there through the computer. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get through the season. We'll take a couple, couple of weeks off and then we'll come back and we'll do some more. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to break every once in a while. <laughs> this, is, this is incredibly stressful to uh, create a drawing live in 45 minutes. The live lessons, which I've been doing for so many years, that's, that's a little bit more less pressure oriented because I don't have to finish a piece in... 45 minutes, mm -hmm. I guess the time. 45 out plus now. minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How far <laughs> did I go over? I don't know. I wasn't keeping track. All right. Uh, well, I can keep going here while I'm talking about finishing this thing up, but but uh, but this is this is um, this is nerve wracking to do this week after week. Uh, but uh, anyway, so for my last drawing, I'm thinking of mm. either using oil pastels or using white charcoal and black paper. Okay. It'll be one of those two. Okay. Well, then I'll make sure not to choose either one of those. Well, you could week. do either one and I could do the other one. That's so, true. So we have, anyway, yeah. the bottom line is we have two more weeks of this, uh, for this season. All right. Well, uh, I guess this one is, is finished. I'd love to do some more work to it, obviously, but it looks like a leaf. It sure does. Um, it's got some nice colors it's in it. seasonally appropriate. And if I tried to do this with just colored pencils, I probably would have that much done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the addition of the pan pastels and, of course, the pastel in the background definitely helps things a lot. All right, uh, let's switch back out over here. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast and tonight's challenge. Next week, Ashley will be doing it, and you have no clue as of yet. Uh, do you not want anybody in the chat box to make suggestions? They can. They can. They're, make you're more than welcome to make a suggestion in the chat box if it's something you'd like seen drawn. If you want to challenge me, I'll try to draw your suggestion in 45 minutes. We'll take a look at the chat roll um, at the end, and uh, I just wanted to say to the rest of you emotionless souls out there, live long and prosper. <laughs> Um, yep. And, uh, let's see, Sherry, I think it was Sherry. I saw that 
she said only two when will you start back up so we're okay. going to do two more episodes in this season that make, that makes like 13 to, that's episodes to the end or, of october or something for this season mm -hmm. and there's a season one believe it or not but you got to go to the website to find them and i'm planning on well they're on youtube too but i plan on organizing them a little bit better if you do go to the blog so you can go back into the archives of the getting sketchy because really when i started getting sketchy i didn't think it was going to be this popular but people People really like it. Um, so we'll continue doing it. But uh, for this season, we'll do two more episodes and then take a couple of weeks off and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll do some more since you guys really like it. And we really like it too. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so we'll continue next week, uh, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that depends on where you are in the world. If you want uh, a reminder that we're gonna go live, just click on the link in the description below this video for the free videos, the free videos and eBooks, because that will put you on our newsletter list. And I send out a reminder of this every Wednesday morning that we do go live. So you'll get those reminders. Plus you'll get a bunch of free art lessons too over the course of a couple of months as well. So um, that's the link in the description below for the free course videos and eBooks and also uh, check out our membership program. It really is great. Uh, there's been a lot of love that put it, that's put that been put into that program, and uh, we've helped thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people. And uh, I love what I'm doing over there, and I think the folks that are a part of it love it too. So uh, anyway, we got to get off of here because we're going live again uh, for our first live lesson series in about an hour from now. Has anybody said anything over there? Oh, yeah. We've Ashley? got a lot of suggestions for uh, subject matter next week um, from, let's see, an, an owl, a llama, uh, but uh, <laughs> a bowl of fruit. And I actually love to draw bowls of fruit. There are people saying kittens Oh, I, and I was going to get um, The cats is overwhelming. So we're going to draw a cat next week. I don't know if it'll be an adult cat or a kitten, but it's going to be some kind of a cat. So, And uh, I'm going to bring my cat, and I'm going to actually use his paws to draw with. But so. you, you can't bring your cat. I'm <laughs> allergic to your cat. It'll just uh, be me and the cat in the studio next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. I'll just take the take the week off. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this uh, evening. Remember, we'll see uh, you guys who are members. Uh, let's see. Less than 30 minutes from now. So That's i got to right. prepare. i got to get set up. So uh, over at thevirtualinstructor.com. Um, all right. Let's see if I can figure out what button to push. Good night, everybody. Good night.